So before we get started, let's talk about reverse engineering first. So I understand a lot of you might struggle with how to get started and I want you to know that's normal. The more you work on things, the more experience you have and your tool belt helps you solve more problems like Batman, ignoring striking fear in the hearts of criminals at night, of course. So let's say you were tasked to make something like to do MVC. If you're slightly inexperienced, it might be intimidating at first, but let's break everything into smaller parts. The entire to-do list is basically a text input that adds what you just typed to the screen. So let's focus on one step at a time. Another thing I would be distracted by is the animations when you complete a to-do, and notice if you double-click the to-do, you can edit it. So for example, if you look here, we might be looking at this like, oh, this looks so fancy and flashy, right? Like, how am I ever going to achieve this? But it's not that bad, and of course, if we double click it we can enter an editing state and this might look really complicated of course but let's break things down so examples are always interesting because we can just open the developer tools using Control shift i and we can just inspect the element and see what's going on so for example we can see here here's a label and what happens when we double click it right so we just observe what's going on we can see a class of editing has been added and there's also an input that's added. So we can deduce that the label input is being hidden behind the input of the edit when the to-dos are in the editing state, right? So we already learned a lot here. And if you go back to the post and scroll down, here's the same thing I do in the post. And I say, ha, huh, it's not as bad as you thought, right? So if you see, it's just hiding the to-do label and replacing it with a text input field of the same value if you're in the editing state. So this is such a great touch that might look complicated at first, but if you spend time figuring out how it works, you can see it's not that complicated. So how I would learn more about these examples and something I want to recreate is I would copy the HTML and CSS. And you don't even need JavaScript or the logic yet because you can just use fake data in the markup, right? In fact, you can even disable the styles on the page by removing the head tag so you can focus on how it works. So for example, we can go back here can go to the bottom and we're deleting the head tag because usually it contains styles, right? So we can delete this and now it looks much simpler. So when we double click something, ah, we can see the magic behind it, right? So awesome. Let's go back here. I'll show you the same thing. So this can be great fun. Instead of getting overwhelmed by everything, observe how it works and write it down as a to-do list. I know it's very meta. So this is what I did when I approached this example. So I made a list of how this complete thing works and then I recreated it and I ended up with the final result, right? It's not that complicated when you break it down into steps. So I hope you have more confidence or this shows you how you can approach solving these types of problems.